Hey folks, this is Ground Guitar, and today we'll be talking about the five most essential guitars used by Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin. We'll share stories behind them, when and where they were acquired, the history of their mods, and on which iconic songs they can be heard. So strap in and enjoy this piece of guitar history. As always, for a more comprehensive list of guitars, amps, effects, and gear used by Jimmy Page, make sure to check out our website, www.groundguitar.com. Link will be in the description. Number 5, 1961 Dan Electro DC2 3021. This is probably one of the lesser known guitars from this list, but nonetheless, it's one that Jimmy Page favors very highly. He got this Dan Electro sometime in the mid 60s, way before Led Zeppelin was even a thing. At that time, young Jimmy was working as a studio musician, playing for whoever needed a guitarist who knew his way around the fretboard. In a 2020 interview with Total Guitar, Page explained that he first encountered this guitar at a local Selmer's shop, and it was the cheapest guitar among all the guitars that the shop had at that time, selling at only 45 pounds. The main reason for this low price was that the guitar was built from masonite instead of solid wood. I said, let's have a go on it because of course it's hollow bodied, put together with plywood. It sounded phenomenal and I could afford it. So I thought I'll have this as a sort of second guitar. When it comes to guitars, people are very traditional, and everyone wants a solid wood guitar. But this Dan Electro is a rare exception to that rule, mostly thanks to Jimmy Page. In the same interview, Page explains that he did not use the guitar that much for his studio work, as he mostly relied on a Les Paul for that purpose. Most of the time, he kept the Dan Electro tuned to alternate tunings and carried the guitar with him as a spare. And, in case something went wrong with his main guitar, he would quickly tune the Dan Electro to standard and keep on playing. It was the backup guitar because I was only going out there with two guitars, really, in 1968, 1969. I just had just the Telecaster and the Dane Electro until I got the Gibson. So if I broke a string, I'd quickly get it into standard tuning from the dadgad it was in and then go off. Where this Dan Electro really gained its notoriety was when Page started recording with his own band, Led Zeppelin. Since he had the guitar tuned to Dadgad, which is an alternate tuning, it served as a perfect instrument for coming up with unusual riffs. One such riff came to Jimmy as a result of playing around on this guitar and expanding on an earlier idea he had in a song he wrote called Swan Song. Jimmy took one part of that song, wrote an extension on it, moved a few things around, and Kashmir was born. A song that almost certainly would not exist if Jimmy had not purchased this guitar on that day at the Selmer's Music Shop. Aside from Kashmir, Jimmy also used this guitar on White Summer with the Yardbirds, and on White Summer Blackside Mountain, and In My Time of Dying with Led Zeppelin. I started to write things on it like Kashmir because I was used to playing it in the Dadgad tuning, so Kashmir came out on that guitar, and In My Time of Dying. They're both on the same album. So at number five, we have this 1961 Dane Electro DC2 3021, a black and white semi-hollow masonite body guitar with two single coil pickups known among gearheads simply as lipsticks. Number four, 1960 Gibson Les Paul Custom. This 1960 Gibson Les Paul Custom served as Jimmy Page's primary guitar during his early years as a studio musician. He acquired the guitar around 1963, shortly after parting ways with the Crusaders, one of his early bands. During this period, the Les Paul Custom became his main instrument, heard on the majority of recordings he worked on. This includes notable tracks such as the Goldfinger theme song, Tom Jones's It's Not Unusual, and Petula Clark's Downtown. He also played it on a few songs by the Kinks and on the Who's Bald-Headed Woman. The first time I played it, I had such a connection with it, I thought, this is it. After all this searching and going through guitar shops, this is the one. I got it before I went to art college, so when I started doing studio work as a session player, that's the electric that's used on pretty much all of that work. In the context of Led Zeppelin, Jimmy used the guitar with the band. But it wasn't his primary recording guitar during that time. The only confirmed song featuring this guitar is Whole Lotta Love, which is arguably one of the band's biggest hits. Also, up until the 70s, the guitar remained mostly stock, equipped with three Gibson pickups and a Bigsby tremolo. But sometime in early 1970, Jimmy modified the guitar with two more toggle switches, 
which allowed him to turn each pickup on or off separately. So for instance, he could use the bridge and the neck pickup together, something he couldn't do with the regular five-way switch. Unfortunately, Jimmy didn't have the opportunity to play and experiment with this guitar for much longer, as tragedy struck in April 1970 when the prized instrument went missing mid-tour during a flight from Boston to Montreal. I had a black Les Paul Custom with a tremolo arm that was stolen during the first 18 months of Zeppelin. It was lifted at the airport. We were on our way to Canada, and somewhere there was a flight change and it disappeared. It never arrived at the other end. And what's more, for almost half a decade believed to be lost forever, the Les Paul Custom resurfaced in 2016, revealing its astonishing journey. Swiped by an airport worker, it lay dormant beneath a bed for 20 years before their spouse sold it to a guitar shop for a mere $5,000. An attempt was made at that point to authenticate the guitar, but after a quick look over, no indication of the two additional toggle switches ever being there was seen. So the shop probably figured it was all just a made-up story, and they quickly resold the guitar. Paul Bleem Claisgens, the guitar's new owner, unwittingly possessed this piece of rock history for another 20 years. It wasn't until he took the guitar for repairs at the very shop he'd purchased it from that the truth emerged. The guitar was indeed Page's long-lost Les Paul custom. In a heartwarming resolution, it became obvious that the Les Paul was refinished by someone, and the new finish covered the repairs done to the holes made for the extra switches that Jimmy installed. A deal was quickly brokered between Paul and Page's representatives, reuniting the legendary guitarist with his cherished instrument and gifting Paul a different vintage Gibson Les Paul Custom. Quite a nice deed by Paul, as Page's guitar is worth probably 10 times more than just any old Les Paul Custom. Number 3, 1971, Gibson EDS 1275 Double Neck Custom. Compared to the two previously mentioned guitars, this 1971 Gibson EDS 1275 Double Neck doesn't have an elaborate tail behind it. Nevertheless, it remains one of the most recognizable guitars used by Jimmy Page. The story basically boils down to Jimmy contemplating how to perform Stairway to Heaven live, considering he used a number of different guitars on the studio recording. He used an acoustic guitar in the intro, followed by an electric 12-string, and concluded with a Telecaster during the solo. To address this challenge, Jimmy reached out to Gibson and ordered a custom-made Gibson EDS-1275. This guitar featured two necks, one with six strings and the other with 12 strings. Custom ordering was necessary because the model was no longer in production by 1971. It had only been produced from 1963 to 1968. And Jimmy, for some reason, preferred a new guitar instead of a used one. We recorded Stairway to Heaven, and because there was like a guitar army on it, as they used to tease me, because of that it needed more texture than just one guitar. The double neck seemed like a perfect compromise. In addition to Stairway to Heaven, Page also utilized this guitar for live performances of The Rain Song, Celebration Day, and The Song Remains the Same with Led Zeppelin. So, although the origins of this guitar in Jimmy's collection may seem rather simple, acquired for a specific purpose, its significance cannot be overstated. Indeed, this instrument stands as not only a cornerstone of his collection, but also as an emblem of his musical legacy, forever etched into the annals of iconic and unforgettable guitars. Witnessing Jimmy play this guitar live at Madison Square Garden in 1973 epitomizes the essence of being a rock star. Number 2. 1959 Fender Telecaster, The Dragon Telly. This guitar was given to Jimmy by Jeff Beck in 1965 as a gift shortly after Page recommended Beck as a replacement for Eric Clapton in The Yardbirds. According to the story, initially, Clapton considered Jimmy as his potential successor, but at that time, Jimmy wasn't interested in becoming a touring musician. It simply wasn't the right moment for him. However, he eventually changed his mind and joined the Yardbirds in June 1966, where he played alongside Beck as a rhythm guitarist, or occasionally, a bassist. And, after Jeff Beck left the band in November 1966, Jimmy took over the role of the lead guitarist and played with the band until its breakup in 1968. Throughout his time with the Yardbirds, this Telecaster served as his main instrument. The Telecaster was also Jimmy's main guitar with his new band, Led Zeppelin and it was the only guitar that he used to record the entirety of Led Zeppelin's first album, 
aside from the acoustic guitars, of course. Dazed and confused, good times, bad times, babe, I'm gonna leave you. All these huge breakthrough hits were recorded on this exact 1959 Fender Telecaster. It was basically whatever we could afford at that time. I didn't really make any money when I was with the Yardbirds. So I was pretty broke in the beginning. I actually had to finance the first Zeppelin album with money I had saved as a session musician. What I had as equipment was very minimal. I had my Telecaster that Jeff Beck gave me, a Harmony acoustic, a bunch of Rickenbacker transonic cabinets left over from the Yardbirds, and a hodgepodge of amps, Vox and hi watts mostly. The guitar was also very unique in terms of its looks. When Jimmy first got the Telecaster, it featured just a regular white finish, but at some point in 1967, he glued eight circular mirrors on the body. He was possibly inspired to do this by Sid Barrett of Pink Floyd, who was famous for playing a Fender Esquire with the exact same mirror setup. This allowed Jimmy to create light effects during live performances by reflecting the stage lights back to the audience. But after a while, Jimmy decided to remove the mirrors, strip the finish entirely, and repaint the guitar himself. The Telecaster ended up looking the way it's mostly known for, featuring a clear lacquer and a red and green dragon design, hand-drawn by Jimmy himself. This remodeling also involved adding a custom-made clear plastic pickguard, beneath which a reflective film was placed to recreate the effect previously achieved by the mirrors. The guitar remained in this state until the late 70s when one of Jimmy's friends, without his permission, repainted the entire body. According to Page, this action essentially ruined the guitar, leaving only the neck pickup in working condition. I still have it, but it's a tragic story. I went on tour with the 1959 Les Paul that I bought from Joe Walsh, and when I got back, a friend of mine had kindly painted over my paint job. He said, I've got a present for you. He thought he had done me a real favor. As you can guess, I wasn't really happy about that. His paint job totally screwed up the sound and the wiring, so only the neck pickup worked. I salvaged the neck and put it on my brown telestring bender that I used in the firm. As for the body, it will never be seen again. Number one, 1959-1960 Gibson Les Paul Standard. The most important guitar in Jimmy Page's collection is the one that he himself calls his number one, a Gibson Les Paul Standard. Page used this guitar as his primary instrument with Led Zeppelin, and it has appeared on almost all of the band's albums, except for the first one. He also used it for the majority of the band's live performances. Page acquired the guitar in 1969 from Joe Walsh, who at that time performed with James Gang, but later became known as one of the guitarists of the band The Eagles. Apparently, Page was in the market for a Les Paul, and Walsh happened to have two of them, one of which he was willing to sell. There are different stories about this, but according to Walsh, he personally flew over and delivered the guitar to Page, charging only the amount to cover his travel expenses, which was around $1,200. By the time Page received the guitar, some modifications had already been done to it. Most notably, Joe Walsh took the guitar to Virgil Lay, the legendary luthier and the owner of Lay's Guitar Shop in Akron, to make the guitar's neck thinner and easier to play. Fortunately, this modification was exactly what Page loved about the guitar, making it a perfect match. It was a guitar I was meant to have. Joe Walsh told me I should buy this guitar. He was right. It became my wife and mistress without the alimony. One issue that was caused by this is that it's still unknown what year model the guitar is exactly. Because the neck was sanded down, the serial number on the guitar is no longer there. Nevertheless, based on the overall specifications of the guitar, it has been concluded that it was either made in 1959 or 1960. In terms of modifications done by Jimmy Page himself, he replaced the bridge pickup with a T-top humbucker sometime after the Australia tour in 1972, as the original pickup had malfunctioned. Years later, in the 90s, he replaced that pickup again with a custom wound Seymour Duncan humbucker. Jimmy also replaced one of the original knobs with a push-pull knob, which enabled him to reverse the phase of the pickups when this switch was activated. However, this mod was added probably sometime in the 80s, so years after Led Zeppelin disbanded. It's also worth mentioning that Jimmy also has a number two Les Paul, which he would use as a backup in case something happened to his number one guitar. You can find more information about this specific guitar on our website. The link will be provided in the description. If I were going out on tour tomorrow, I'd be using the Les Paul I bought from Joe Walsh in 1969. 
I probably would still use the double neck that I bought while in Zeppelin to play Stairway to Heaven as well. There's some sort of allegiance to those guitars. They're old friends. So, folks, there you have it. The top five most important guitars wielded by the legendary Jimmy Page, an icon whose incredible talent and artistry have left an indelible mark on the world of rock and roll. If you're a fan of Jimmy Page or just love guitar history, be sure to smash that like button and show your support. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more amazing content about iconic guitars and the legends who played them. Your support helps us continue to dive deep into the world of music and share these incredible stories with you. For more in-depth information and exclusive content, head on over to groundguitar.com where we have a treasure trove of guitar history, stories, and gear breakdowns waiting for you. Thanks for watching.